It is with great delight that I address these eminent personalities gathered here today at the official launch of the Peace and Unity Campaign, organized by Ambassadors of Voice for Change in Nigeria in partnership with the Federal Capital Territory Administration. First, let me commend the thoughtfulness of the organizers, which crystallizes the relevance of peace in a national entity of multivocal groups. The Federal Capital Territory Administration decided to partner with this group because responsible and responsive leaders must work assiduously towards unity and tolerance among ethnic groups in the country. Your Excellencies, it might interest you to know that last week I personally joined and led a large population of Nigerian youths on a roadwalk through major streets of Abuja to demonstrate that no matter our divergent views, tribes and religion, the unity of Nigeria is non-negotiable. And that is the duty of our Nigerian, of our Nigerians to join the peace campaign. Irrespective of tribal gender, irrespective of the class or religion, whatever the barrier is, in this struggle for unity, I think it's time we let it go and set it aside to ensure that we preach the gospel of peace across the country. Because somewhere, somehow, all of us in this hall and beyond do have at least one family member who believes in us. However, let me stress that it is not peace that brings about unity, but rather unity brings about peaceful coexistence amongst people of divergent historical, ethnic, and religious affiliations. In other words, people of different socio-economic, cultural norms and values must tolerate one another before peace becomes cosmetic too for their existence. It is easy to think about peace, it is easy to talk about peace. But the easiest thing is actually the understanding that will lead to peaceful coexistence. We must recommend absolute level of citizens' orientation, education, tolerance, cultural relative norms and values be inculcated among the youth so as to make them the future leaders of this great entity called Nigeria. If we do not put in the parental efforts, the royal efforts, the cultural values to ensure that our children, whatever it takes, get to understand the simple language of peace by understanding and trusting one another, then peaceful coexistence might just be a tall dream. It is a collective responsibility and a search. I want to tell us clear today, in this hall and beyond, all Nigerians must realize that this responsibility is yours and mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to assure our esteemed guests that the peace campaign will resonate in 36 states of the Federation and our ambassadors will speak the language of peace to other youths in our major cities, including FCT. I have no doubt in my mind that with this, Nigerian youths will resolve not to be used as tools for destruction. It is easy to say it loud, but it is easy to be resolved to say we will not be used as the agents of destruction. Maybe I'll say it clearly, without fear that I'm also part of them. At over 50, all of us should begin to understand that. <laughs> we have almost spent half of the life if we have 100 years to go. But it is mandatory that we pick up the young ones, 
for these values were inculcated in us as well. From the four Bihanas, the likes of Nandi Azikwe, the likes of Awolo, we had great ladies too. To meet some of you, that ensured that we understood the language and value of peace amongst us. And that is the Nigeria we have. But she will be, she will continue to work in the euphoria of what we used to have. Oh, stand tall, united, many you can see burying the hatches to ensure that it continues to exist amongst us in we. When you lie to yourself, it is difficult to be convinced because the most difficult and the highest form of deceit is self-deceit. Do we have another country other than Nigeria? I want to hear this answer loud and clear. Do we have another country other than Nigeria? As the largest African nation, as the most popular nation. As a nation with over 200 billion in existence, can we please mention a nation that will be ready to accommodate our refugees? No one will tell us the truth. But we will tell it to ourselves. I up today, as I always say, if you accommodate me, to please backslide and reduce my age by just five years to say I, I qualify to be called a youth for you, so that we we'll move across this country. I'm ready to move with all of us. I'm ready to drop this toga on a campaign of door to door to appeal, to massage all egos, to let it go for peace to reign. Ladies and gentlemen, many stakeholders and public commentators have pointed out that our major problem as a country is lack of understanding. I cannot agree less to this postulation because we need to understand one another. If we understand one another, we will surely tolerate each other and peace will reign. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on this note, and in conclusion, we need to remind ourselves that though tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. It is only through peace and meaningful development we, we can have a great Nigeria. Once again, I thank you all for listening. Dr. Ramatu Tijani Ali, Honorable Minister of State. On this day, the 20, 21st December 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay. Alright, let's do one for her. She's a true African friend.